our shift lead Kat Castillo at the supermarket. She often sends us inspiring messages in the morning before our shift starts and every once in a while I'm thinking hey this is really really good so I, I find it very motivating and this one really hit a nerve I think it was yesterday when she posted this and I don't know what source she consults to find these things but the one that she found is something along the lines of the difference between you have to and you get to so there's a difference between you have to go to work and you get to go to work as in you're allowed to go to work you can go to work as opposed to oh man i'm gonna have to bloody do this and you don't really want to and it's one of those expressions that we just we just say you know, I have to go to work but no one's really forcing you to do that it's something you do by choice first of all so that's that's number one but also the other thing is that if you turn it into I get to go to work and I get to do X Y and Z then not only does it no longer feel like a chore to do this it also drives back the point that sometimes you can't do these things and even if you dislike what you're doing if you're not entirely 100% happy with whatever you're doing that you're about to do that you are currently doing you can always remember that there are situations in your life when that isn't even possible like you know if you're too ill to work if you can't work because you have to be in bed and you have to be still and not move so that your body can recover and you can't go to work and at that point you know it's one of those things you probably think hey I would like to do this I'd love to actually go to work and have some normality turn into my life but you can't it's impossible but now that you can do that it's kind of wrong to say I have to go to work because people are holding a gun to my head not quite the case that you know you you get to do this because you can because you want to you know you, you you're you're given the opportunity you have the chance that that has puts a very different spin on things I, I always remember it's kind of on a related note I always remember that being a freelancer back in London was really nice because before that I was put on regular shifts so there was a shift pattern that would come out and you just put on a rotor and you work whenever it's your turn really but uh, that's interesting in the beginning but there comes a point where it's you feel like you're taken for granted there and with freelancing there's always the invitation could you do next Wednesday could you do next Saturday could you help me out next Friday and do a shift for me says the scheduler and I'm always thinking yeah this is there's this underlying appreciation there that it's not you have to do this you're being invited to help out and you get paid handsomely for it and that was a really nice arrangement I really liked that and it was much less of a chore to go to work even though it was a tough job it was also very well paid but it was also there was no no chore involved as an oh I have to do this you don't have to do anything you can do as much or as little as you like and sometimes if we're in the rat race on a rut it's very difficult to remember that so yes uh, Kat's note about you have to versus you get to really struck a chord there with me we've just survived the hurricane the one that luckily hasn't hit us but uh, all the preparations and all the kind of fear and anxiety that many people have had around it that was of course very real and that's really nice the fact that that is over so what I did during those days during the whole week was uh, if I find myself with kind of a spontaneous mini break on my hands and that was really nice so I got to catch up on many of these things that I had on a very long list of things to do like you know overhaul a website here and a couple of expressions there and so forth so you know a lot of time uh, that I, I found myself having spontaneously I could invest into things like that so that was that was really nice I also took it really easy because I do feel like I've been working a lot not so much at the supermarket but in regards to my kind of creative output if you want to call it that I've been continuously busy with kind of three streams a week up until very recently plus uploads plus many many other things and 
just items that were in the pipeline that just kept me busy uh, setting up the discord server ongoingly uh, running that and then looking in on that and uh, all kinds of things really there's many many things i haven't been able to do but the things i have managed to do were yesterday uh, one exciting thing is called umlaut board that is a little umlaut mini web app if you want to call it that and that gives you quick access to umlaut so i've made that happen cloned it from nevin morgan's glyph board very exciting you can look in on that on my website then i brought my bicycle to the repair shop it needed kind of not so much a new brake at the back but it was kind of the cable was getting you know thin and stretchy and it was barely working so i put it in for a full tune-up and they lubricated everything so it's, it's absolutely cool now that my my bike feels like a brand new bike so it's all smooth and then fast and uh, the gears shift and both brakes respond so much faster so i every once in a while i forget that and i brake as hard as i did before and i nearly fall off the bike as a result so very exciting that then we've uh, installed some kind of software update on julia's iphone it is losing a bit of power there so the battery is kind of on its last legs julia's been using her iphone 6s since 2015 and i think in her job uh, since 2017 i believe and yeah it just goes to show it's the iphone is old the battery has had its day so it doesn't hold its charge anymore and we were debating what to do so one thing was at the latest whatever software update point for 12 point four point whatever i don't know i don't really remember and for some bizarre reason she now has the i she now had the british version of siri on there we we used to have it that siri understands us speaking british to it but responds american and i remember we changed that back in the day when they took the British male Siri voice away and replaced that with some upgrade which sounded terrible so you know stroppy attitude really like you know hey, I don't know why you'd want to do that and, well I, I don't know why you even come back here so for some reason the American female voice that used to grace her phone is now has now been turned into the super stroppy British male voice again and which I do remember switching that off at one point so very bizarre so now she's got stroppy Siri so we thought yeah that's 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 gonna stop we can't listen to this guy so we uh, looked through the voices that were available and now she's got irish siri that's really cool so we can say hey siri what's the weather like today oh yeah, there'll be thunderstorms and a little bit of wee rain there that's very friendly so i thought that's that's cool so we did that uh, but what Julia doesn't know is that I've ordered her a new iPhone earlier, uh, not earlier in the week actually, and I'm picking it up later today on my way from work. It's supposed to be ready. It's an iPhone 7, and that is also three years old, but it's a refurbished one because it was about 500 something dollars as opposed to $1,500 for a new iPhone. We've been looking into all these options that we have you know lease one buy one of the latest ones which we don't really I, neither of us like the the new iPhones with the face ID and with the you know bigger slimmer faster more expensive type thing I, I can't believe it the cheapest iPhone you can get now is thousand dollars it's super crazy that's the cheapest and the one you probably want is the one for fifteen hundred dollars it's a phone for Christ's sake and the issue with Julia's current iPhone is if we were to replace the battery through Apple it'll be about hundred dollars but it means it'll be out of commission for about a week so you don't get to pick that up you can go to Rajneesh at the corner store he does it for 20 bucks but will you get your iPhone back kind of questionable so I've had friends who had that happen and then the mysterious things start happening like you know display doesn't work anymore this headphone connector doesn't work anymore you know no 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 let's let's not let's not do that you can also buy yourself a $20 battery replacement kit from iFixit and risk that your chubby butterfingers will ruin the thing forever and we also thought no 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 let's not do that either we could put a new battery in or have Apple do that but then what would happen is that Julia will be out without a phone for a week and she doesn't have a capable spare backup so I thought well 
the only other viable option is then to get a refurbished one and get basically a used board with a brand new battery and a brand new case and save a lot of cash in the process so that's what i thought we're going to do and i'll pick it up later for her so it's going to be it's going to be interesting new iphone in the house it's kind of matches the matches the the vintage of my new ipad that i've just bought which is in fact you know two years old technically it is the latest version but it's got a two-year-old processor which according to my calculations is probably going to be supported until 2021 2022 if we're really lucky but yes uh, there's just there's just no supporting it back after that but until such time maybe we'll we'll be brave enough to upgrade to an android phone or a razor phone or whatever solution we have then yes what else have I done? I've overhauled the donations page on my website, so I want to put that in to the streams, that there is one central point to put donations in place because I get a lot of questions about can people donate in other ways, like DAS, gift certificates, direct donations via PayPal, and uh, just alternatives to Patreon, which I understand sometimes you just want to make a one-off donation rather than an ongoing monthly donation. And so I've put all that on one page and that'll be at the top of the streams going forward. I've also, uh, speaking of Umlaut board earlier, I, I got in touch with the developer of the Glyph board that I based it on and asked him, could I use his code so that I can replicate it? That's a really, really cool story. He said, absolutely, go do it. Within an hour, he replied. It's very, very nice of him to let me do that. And uh, in so doing, I found out that he actually works for a company called Panic. And Panic, I remember, is in, in Oregon. And they, are, they, they used to make Mac and iOS software. And one of their apps was my absolute favorite for the iPhone and the iPad. It's called Prompt. And that is... A, really nice old style terminal emulator with which you can ssh into any server of your choice and that's really handy for me because i administer web servers and sometimes i just need to make a change when i'm on the go and the uh, prompt is just wonderful i had version one upgrade to version two and it's just it's a wonderful design philosophy and wonderful feel to it and if you know how to develop iOS apps then you look at this and you think that's actually really difficult to accomplish to get it to give it that sort of retro type feel of talking on the Linux command line and they've they've done it just really really well and um, so yes he works for that company Nevin does who made who made Glyphboard many many years ago and so I looked on their website and they also now helped make video games and one of them happened to be on sale they also make a games console uh, called Playdate very interesting things it's yellow has a crank it's all exciting stuff so I might have to I may have to invest that's uh, that's really cool there little standalone little almost like a like a Game Boy type thing with a crank don't know what the crank's for but hey that's that's the play date so anyway they also make video games or help to make video games and one of them happened to be on sale at gog.com and it's called firewatch so i thought hey that's that trailer really interested me it's a first person immersive story driven adventure game so kind of totally up my alley you're a fire kind of lookout in wyoming so right around the corner from Longmire, basically, in a national park, and you're a fire spotter. You have a difficult past and mysterious things start happening. The very cool. So I played it yesterday, and I'm thinking that may be something that we can explore for the Monday streams, which may be coming back. Or we could do it on the Friday for like, you know, Firewatch Friday, or it could become like, you know, Mystery Monday. I don't know. I don't know yet. But yes, those are all my thoughts for the day. I'm going to have to go to work now. And uh, yes, thank you so much for watching.